is a plant that looks a whole lot like wheat. So much so that the seedlings are indistinguishable. And even the full-grown plants are so similar that only the most experienced agricultural eye can tell the difference. Bearded darnel is a whole lot like wheat. It's a hitchhiker plant, meaning that it doesn't grow independently. It only grows alongside cultivated crops. It tags along during planting and harvest, infiltrating a crop over time. In other words, its very existence depends on human intervention. Bearded darnel is a whole lot like wheat, except for the fact that it's toxic. In a small amount, it intoxicates the senses, blurring the vision and slurring speech. In larger amounts, it is poisonous even fatally so. This look-alike plant was a danger for farmers. There was actually a Roman law that forbade the planting of bearded darnel in the field of one's enemy. The existence of this legislation shows that this was a recurring problem. It was apparently a common enough act of vengeance to go out into the field of your enemy and spread the toxic seed side by side with the life-giving one. Darnel and wheat, two similar plants with very different impacts. Darnel has been largely eradicated from modern farming, but it was a problem for Jesus' original audience. So the story that Jesus is telling describes a scenario they've seen before, or at least heard about. They know that Darnel can sabotage a harvest. This is a parable. Parables are stories that help us think. And they are less about providing answers and more about getting us to ask questions on complicated topics. Today's parable is part of a series of parables in the Gospel of Matthew all of which help us think about the kingdom of heaven. A complicated topic if I've ever heard one. The kingdom of heaven, the community of God, what theologians often describe as the already but not yet. The kingdom of heaven is, in some ways, already here among us as God works within creation. But it also isn't here yet. It's not fully realized. The kingdom of heaven is vast. It is big. It is beyond our full comprehension. So Jesus uses these parables as a way to help us think, question, wonder, about its qualities. If you were here last week, you heard Pastor Veronica preach on the first Kingdom of Heaven parable, also a parable about seeds, the parable of the sower. It goes a little like this. The Kingdom of Heaven is like seeds scattered on the ground. Some seeds fall on fertile soil, some fall on rocky soil, some fall on shallow soil, and some fall on thorny soil. 
And following today's parable, there are two others, the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast. And in the middle is this, the parable of the weeds, the parable of darnel and wheat. Parables are stories that help us think, and they're designed to surprise us. Parables often have a turning point, a hinge, where things don't go quite the way we anticipate. And this hinge in the story helps us get at the good stuff. So where is the hinge in today's parable? Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed darnel weeds among the wheat and then crept away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. So far, the parable is following a familiar storyline, agricultural sabotage of one's enemy. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? He replied, no. No. Why in the world wouldn't the owner want the darnel pulled out? After all, it's a toxin. It's a poison. Why wouldn't he want it gone? Well, he gives a reason. For in gathering the darnel, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, we don't have to guess too much at an interpretation. Jesus gives one in the text. The darnel is evil, the wheat is good. God will judge between that which is evil and that which is good, and God will destroy that which is evil and treasure that which is good. But what does this mean about the kingdom of heaven? What does it mean that God's community, that which is already and not yet, has both good and evil growing together at least for a time. Now one reading might say, it's simple. Weeds are the bad people, wheat is the good people, we live together, we die, bad people are sent to hell, good people are sent to heaven, done. Well, I think there's a more nuanced reading. Because remember, parables, they're actually not about answers, they're about questions. And I think there's another reading that prompts deeper thought as a parable should. This more nuanced reading first acknowledges the existence of evil. In fact, there's evil right there in the parable. Yes, with the enemy sowing darnel seeds, but also with the master and the slaves. Slavery is evil. Enslavement did not, despite what some textbooks are now trying to say, create skills 
that people could apply to their later employments. Slavery, enslavement of a human being is evil. Evil is real. It is present among us, and Jesus acknowledges that. But evil is also sometimes within us. For the reality is that people aren't only darnel or only wheat. Each of us has the potential for both to grow in our heart. So the more nuanced reading then questions our judgment. The parable prompts us to consider that we are not as good judges of character as we like to think we are. Humans aren't actually very good at discerning between weed and wheat. We try to do it all the time. We sort people into groups making sweeping judges of character. But Jesus says that in doing so, we risk uprooting the real capacities and gifts of others. Or, or sometimes in doing so, we dismiss the possibility of change. Or we dismiss the possibility of growth. We dismiss the real possibility that God is at work in the field of someone's soul in ways that our human eyes can't see. Now, this does not negate accountability for bad behavior. Just a few chapters later in Matthew 18, Jesus teaches how communities should proceed when harm has been done. This parable is not saying that we should just let everyone do what they want and seek no accountability until the end of days. No, Jesus teaches that when harm is done, there is a process for attempted reconciliation, attempted repair, and if that is not possible, for removal from a community so that no further harm is done. But the parable does ask us to consider our judgment. We are not good judges of someone's ultimate worth or someone's salvation. And while this might surprise us or provoke us or make us a little uncomfortable, Jesus has said this before. First, take the log out of your own eye and then see clearly enough to take the speck out of your sibling's eye. Let any among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone. Jesus repeatedly in his teaching points us back at ourselves saying, oh, my beloved, look at your own internal field. See what you've got growing in there before you decide that one of my sheep should be tossed aside. Jesus uses the metaphor of darnel for a reason, certainly for the familiarity of the original audience, but also for the properties of darnel itself. Properties that echo those of evil and the impact that evil can have on our soul. Darnel, remember, requires human cultivation. So does evil. Evil is tended by our own hands, our own social injustices, our own systems, our own willingness to let others suffer, our own actions and our own inactions. Darnel intoxicates the senses. Evil does the same. Evil distorts our vision. It distorts how we see people and the world around us. Evil distorts our speech, what we say to and about others, what we say to and about ourselves. 
And if evil builds up in our system, it is poisonous. It will leach life from us. Evil is real. And God will judge it. And God will remove it. God will destroy it, even the evil that grows in our own hearts. For we are not perfect. And God will do this not just after death, but here and now. Even if we can't see it, God is at work in the field. The good news is that we have the chance to grow. We have the chance to cultivate. We have the chance to maybe do a little pruning. We have the chance to repent, to say, I am so sorry, and to receive grace and to try again, but we have to offer others the chance to do the same. For our God doesn't toss anyone away. Amen. Amen.